Ashto T196 covers the determination of the air content of freshly mixed concrete by the volumetric method, commonly referred to as the rollometer test. This method is appropriate for concrete containing any type of aggregate, whether it's dense, cellular, or lightweight. For this test, you will need an air meter designed specifically for the purpose. When acquiring a new meter, make sure it meets Ashto requirements. You will also need a funnel, tamping rod, mallet, strike-off bar, calibrated cup, bulb syringe, water vessel, a scoop, and a sufficient quantity of 70% isopropyl alcohol. All equipment must meet the specifications in Section 4 of the standard. The meter and cup must be calibrated initially and at regular intervals. Ashto specifies a maximum of three years between calibrations, but local or regional requirements may differ. Determine the volume of the bowl according to Section 8 of Ashto T19. You will need a balance readable to within a tenth of a percent of the sample mass or better, a thermometer accurate to one degree Fahrenheit, a glass plate at least a quarter of an inch thick and large enough to completely cover the top of the measure, and a supply of water-insoluble grease, such as petroleum jelly. Weigh the bowl and plate. Record the mass to the nearest tenth of a pound and designate the mass as A. Place a thin layer of grease on the rim to create a seal between the glass and the bowl. Completely fill the bowl with water and record the water temperature to one degree Fahrenheit. Slide the glass plate over the top of the bowl, creating a seal around the rim. The use of a bulb syringe will aid accurate filling. Make certain there are no air bubbles trapped beneath the glass. Remove all excess water from the bowl and glass plate. Weigh the filled bowl and plate and record the mass to the nearest 0.01 pounds and designate the mass as B. Determine the density of the water from Table 3 in Ashto T19 and designate the density as C. To calculate the volume of the bowl, subtract the mass of the bowl and plate, A, from the mass of the bowl and plate filled with water, B, and divide the result by the density of the water, C. Determine the volume of the calibrated cup in similar fashion. Remember to weigh the cup and glass plate together. Use the minimum amount of grease necessary to form a waterproof seal. Leave no bubbles under the glass. And make sure all water is wiped from the outside of the cup. Take care not to break the seal while wiping the underside of the plate. Record weights to the hundredth of a pound to ensure sufficient accuracy with such a small vessel. The volume of the cup should be 1% of the volume of the bowl. Check the accuracy of the graduations in the neck by filling the assembled meter with water until the level is visible in the window. Adjust the level so the bottom of the meniscus is touching one of the graduated whole percent marks. Adding one calibrated cup should bring the level to the next whole percent within a tolerance of one-tenth of a percent. Obtain the sample in accordance with Ashto R60. Wet sieve over a one inch mesh if the maximum size aggregate in the mix exceeds one and a half inches. Begin by wetting the inside of the bowl, leaving it damp but not shiny. Fill the bowl in two approximately equal layers as follows. Place the first layer to about half the height of the bowl. Rod the first layer through its full depth, but avoid forcibly striking the bottom of the bowl. Rod 25 strokes evenly distributed over the cross section. Tap the sides of the bowl 10 to 15 blows with the mallet to close the voids left by the tamping rod and remove large air bubbles. Check the distance from the top of the bowl to the concrete to ensure sufficient penetration with the final rotting. Place the last layer with a volume of material that will leave the bowl overfilled by about an eighth of an inch after consolidation. Rod 25 strokes uniformly distributed over the cross section, penetrating the underlying layer by about one inch with each stroke, and repeat the tapping procedure with the mallet. You may need to add or remove some material to achieve the required one-eighth inch overfill. Strike off the surface level with the top of the bowl, and wipe the flange of the bowl clean. Wet the inside of the top section, including the gasket. Attach the top section to the bowl. Make sure the clamps are secure and a good seal is created. 
Insert the funnel and add at least one pint of water, followed by the selected amount of isopropyl alcohol. The amount of alcohol required will vary depending on the mix. Low cement and air content mixes might require less than a half pint of alcohol, while mixes with high cement and air contents might require three pints or more, necessitating a reduced initial charge of water to avoid overfilling the meter. A correction factor must be applied when two and one half pints or more of alcohol are used. Since the mix we are testing has cement and air contents that are neither high nor low, which is the most common condition, we'll start the test with two pints of alcohol, which usually produces a valid result without the need to add more alcohol or use a correction factor. Add the water first to prevent the concentrated alcohol from coming in contact with the concrete. Add the two pints of alcohol, then continue adding water until it appears in the window. Remove the funnel and adjust the water level so the bottom of the meniscus is on the zero mark. Make sure the inside of the cap and gasket are in good condition and free of debris. Then attach and tighten the cap. Quickly invert the meter and vigorously shake the base back and forth for no more than five seconds before returning the meter to an upright position. Repeat the inversion and shaking procedure for at least 45 seconds until the concrete has been freed from the base. When the concrete is free from the base, grasp the neck with one hand and the flange or clamp with the other. Tilt the meter approximately 45 degrees with the bottom edge of the base resting on the floor or work surface. Use the hand on the flange to vigorously rock the meter several times a quarter to a half a turn back and forth. Then roll the meter about one-third turn and repeat the rocking procedure. The aggregate must be sliding inside the meter during this process. Continue rocking and rolling for about one minute. When the minute is up, set the unit upright and loosen the cap to allow any pressure to stabilize. Allow the meter to stand until the reading does not change by more than one quarter percent in a two minute period. If the reading does not stabilize within six minutes, or if there is more than 2% air divisions of foam above the liquid level, discard the trial and start a new test using more alcohol. If the liquid level is not visible in the window, add calibrated cups of water until the level is readable. The number of cups added will be added to the reading obtained. When an initial reading has been obtained, Retighten the cap and repeat the rock and roll process for another minute. If the reading remains within a quarter percent of the initial reading, record it as the final meter reading. If the reading has changed by more than a quarter percent, record that value as the new initial reading and repeat the rocking and rolling procedure. If the reading then stabilizes within the required one quarter percent, record the value as the final meter reading. Otherwise, discard the test and start fresh using more alcohol. When the test is complete, disassemble the meter and check the bowl. If it appears that any concrete remains compacted in the base, the test is invalid. When reading the meter, be sure to record the level at the bottom of the meniscus. Apply the appropriate correction factor from Table 1 if required and report your final reading to the nearest quarter percent air content. For more details on the most recent specifications, consult the latest Ashto publication, which may be ordered by calling 202-624-5800 or online at transportation.org.